Peter, James, and John, and you and I, are invited to the mountaintop. Not so much to witness Jesus transfigured, but to experience ourselves as transformed. The apostles fall asleep. And Jesus is altogether too much for them and for us. Not because his face shone as the sun, or his clothes gleam with a new radiance, not because of the cloud that overshadowed them, but because there he goes again. Jesus spoke about his going forth, his exodus to Jerusalem, about suffering and death being his true glorification. Peter, James, and John, and you and I will fall asleep again in the garden where Jesus, so afraid, prays, If it is possible, Father, take this cross from me. So terrified, he sweats blood and nevertheless prays, Not my will, but thine be done. Blood, sweat, and tears, suffering, sorrow, and death. It seems to be utter waste, foolishness. But the voice cries out from heaven, thunderingly, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him, follow him. You know, Jesus' transfiguration story springs from resurrection faith. It looks backwards to those first Christians who came to believe that the trust and patience and resolute faithfulness of Jesus ended in victory. Looking backwards, we humans learn so late. But better late than never. Better late to look back and see that the glory of God was always in Christ Jesus. They should have known that from the holiness of his life, from his teaching, from his healing time. The image of Christ that leaps from the story is clear and bold and definitely against all common sense. The glorified Christ, faithful to the law and the prophets, greater than Moses and Elijah, Jesus, the fullness and the expectation of Israel, is the Christ of Calvary, and the cross is his glory, for God will raise him. In the transfiguration is revealed the glory that was always Christ's. And he turns and he says to each of us, be transformed deep within yourself. Change your way of thinking. Listen to me. There is no victory without struggle, and no light without darkness, and no glory without sacrifice, and no truth without searching. No resurrection without death. Clichés? No. The profound truth of our human experience. It's not fair, the pet of the child within each of us says. It's not logical, the stoic argues. Why must it be this way we all sigh? All of us so often fearful of what lies ahead. In my circle of priest friends, there was one who was especially gifted. He was very intelligent, personable, and self-confident. He was a charger, always pushing ahead. A story is told, probably a legend, that on the day he received his first Holy Communion, a relative asked him, is it true, Leo, that you want to be a priest? And Leo hesitated and somehow stroked his chin and said, No, really, I want to be a bishop. <laughs> <laughs> and so he did, always. He wanted to be a bishop. But they didn't make bishops in the mold of Leo Man. It wasn't to be sought. 
He also wanted to be a golfer. Well, he tried. <laughs> In the last 20 years of his life, Leo suffered from a debilitating illness. At first, he just wobbled a little bit. And then he needed a cane. And then he needed a walker. And then he needed a wheelchair. In the last two years of his life, he was better. But something took place deep within him. A new gentleness, a patience, a quiet acceptance. I used to go and visit him quite frequently. And I said to him one time, you know, Leo, you're a really a patient man. He says, I never thought I was patient. I said, you never were. <laughs> but now he was. Never a word about his illness. Never why me. The power of the Spirit of God filled him. So what does it teach us? Well, for one thing, the ways of faith really work. Listen to Christ. The Father pleads, follow me, Jesus invites. The imitators of me, the Apostle Paul, and all the great heroes of God. The ways of God are like a flaming, like a flaming torch passing through the midst of our lives purifying and strengthening and enlarging our hearts so that we extend to others the compassion we have received. And if we listen and follow and imitate the ways of Jesus, which includes the cross, it's not only the cross, but it's inclusive of the cross. Looking backwards, we will grasp the hidden truth that life really does spring from darkness and life really comes from death. And looking forwards, we will have a new freedom, a peaceful acceptance of whatever, whatever will be, for we know that we are always accompanied by the Spirit of God, by a gracious and loving and life-giving God. And so Paul wrote, for this reason, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, you who are my crown and joy, stand firm in the Lord.